Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're going to be talking about a very, very, very hot button topic. We're going to be talking about QAnon today. And the reason why I haven't gotten around to this video sooner in all honesty, and why myself and Ali, my main researcher and writer, we kind of just push this topic to the side because it's just, it's such a tangled web that it's almost hard to even begin looking at it. It's like a very evolved form of like Pizzagate, which is now part of the whole QAnon group thing, kind of. It, this is a lot of like kind ofs, but also just shocking because people believe this. It's I don't know really how to explain this to be totally honest. Now, obviously, as many of you are aware, at the beginning of January this year, the QAnon people proved themselves to be really seriously dangerous and they were brought up in multiple news sources and it left a lot of people wondering who they are and what they believe in, so I figured it's finally time. We're going to start at the very beginning and I'm going to talk about as much as I can in terms of like how I can factually create the timeline, but please just keep in mind that this like group, cult, whatever you wanna call them, they're always growing and changing and shifting patterns. So what I've already researched now in mid January is subject to change by the time that this releases. Now, I think it's pretty clear when I'm telling you right now that this video is demonetized to hell and back, that there is going to be a ton of very uncomfy information today. And those things are going to include pedophilia and assault, things of that nature, although none of it in graphic detail just mentioned. So if you would rather not watch this video because of some of those topics that are gonna be covered today, I totally understand, but this was your fair warning that these kinds of things are going to get brought up. So with that being said, let's go over what we know. So to begin this, we need to start with a brief summary about Pizzagate. Pizzagate was a baseless conspiracy theory centered around Hillary Clinton. This was massive in 2016, around the time of the Clinton versus Trump election. According to the Rolling Stone, the original Pizzagate Facebook post appeared on the evening of October 29th, 2016, a day after then FBI director James Comey announced that the Bureau would be reopening its investigation into Clinton's use of a private email server while Secretary of State data from the server had been found on electronics belonging to former representative Anthony Weiner, who had been caught sexting lewd messages to a 15 year old. On Facebook, a user named Carmen Katz wrote, "My NY." PD source said it's much more vile and serious than classified material on Wiener's device. The email detailed the trips made by Wiener, Bill and Hillary on their pedophile billionaire friend's plane, the Lolita Express. Yep, Hillary had a well-documented predilection for underage girls. We're talking an international child enslavement and sex ring. Carmen Katz's Facebook eventually disappeared and she now claims that she's a Democrat and evades questions about this post. So I'm really not convinced she had any evidence to make those claims whatsoever. But the conspiracy theory continued to spread through viral emails and took off after WikiLeaks released John Podesta, the Clinton campaign manager's emails. 4chan users saw that Podesta had been emailing Comet Ping Pong Pizzeria owner, James Elefantis, discussing a potential fundraiser. People believe that Podesta's repeated use of the word pizza was actually a code word for pedophile and Comet Ping Pong was allegedly the base for secret rooms where Clinton and her allies kidnapped and imprisoned children to be abused, tortured, or sacrificed in the name of Satan. One website called the Conservative Daily Post even had the nerve to say that the FBI even confirmed the existence of Pizzagate without any sources, names, or documents to back it up, which is so hugely irresponsible that it's beyond words to me. And I just, okay, look, I'm not saying that everyone who tells you a story is lying. Not all anecdotal evidence is bullshit, but anecdotal evidence isn't proof of anything, let alone a sex trafficking ring. So the fact that Carmen said this using her husband's title to sound more legit without using any data is pretty fucked up. I don't feel like I should have to say it, but don't believe everything you read on Facebook. Personally, if I can find only one singular source that tells me something, I'm not super inclined to believe it. And I do make some pretty bold accusations against companies here, but 
I use multiple sources, often pages worth of sources in any given episode. If one source called the conservative Daily Post said this, but no one else could confirm it and they had no data to back it up, then why trust that? I mean, they said the FBI confirmed it. Why wouldn't the FBI be coming out with these statements, you know? It just, they would. So it's just kind of a lie. And as for the word pizza actually being pedophile, like again, where's the proof? The guy owned a pizzeria. Wouldn't it make sense to use the word pizza? Like that's what he sells. But this wasn't just a harmful rumor or conspiracy theory because Pizzagate had serious real world consequences. On December 5th, 2016, one article read, frenzied pedo truthers have published the personal information of numerous private citizens and bombarded their social media accounts, homes, and places of business with graphic threats. There have also been in-person confrontations. Last month, an operative with the group Citizens for Trump was kicked out of the restaurant at the center of the speculation, Comet Ping Pong Pizza, for periscoping his visit, which he prefaced by asking his companion, do you think we're going to survive? I don't know. In a video uploaded several days later, protesters stood out front and the owner, James Alfontes, answered their questions and offered them coffee and a tour of the business, which had ping pong tables and a family party room in the back. The stakes escalated dramatically yesterday afternoon when DC police arrested a North Carolina man after he allegedly walked into Comet Pizza with a semi-automatic rifle to self-investigate the theory, pointed the gun at an employee and fired at least one shot. There were no reported injuries. Pizzagate had garnered some national coverage prior to the shooting, but given that the phenomenon shows no signs of disappearing, we thought it would be useful to offer a primer on what pizza truthers believe. This pizza truther stuff was bad enough, but it spread, grew, and got far worse. After all, as horrific as what happened at Comet Pizza is, at least no one was injured. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. And the way QAnon has been fueled in recent years is extremely worrying. So let's get to how pizza truthers became QAnoners. So you understand the terms, let's get into their beliefs and actions. And it's time to take a break to pay some bills and thank today's sponsor, Mint Mobile. After the year we've all been having, saving money should really, really be at the top of everyone's resolution list. So if you're still paying insane amounts of money every month for wireless, then what are you doing exactly? Switching to Mint Mobile is probably one of the easiest ways to save a couple bucks this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, which means you don't have to call people all the time, which anxiety levels dropped, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. In the past like five years, I've been with two carriers and one that I just recently joined onto before Mint Mobile obviously approached me and the amount of money that I have been paying on my phone bill versus what Mint Mobile could save me is actually kind of bananas. And like, I'm talking like a couple Casper toys a month kind of savings. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep the same number along with all of your existing contacts and information, which is super sweet as well. To get your new wireless plan started for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash casket. Again, that's mintmobile.com slash casket. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash casket. And Anon, as the name suggests, is just short for anonymous. Anyone that posts online without using their name is, strictly speaking, an Anon. In the QAnon world though, Anons will also be called Autists and Bakers. According to the Daily Dot, Autist is a reference to autism, supposedly complementing the ability of Q researchers to dig information out of the most bizarre and random topics. Baker is a reference to Q drops being known as breadcrumbs and the long strings of 8chan posts where these drops are dissected being called breads. So first of all, fuck QAnon people that want to call themselves autists when they don't have autism. That's just super insulting to the autistic community. Their idea of digging up information is just making up more radical lies and conspiracies. Don't conflate that with autism, please. And while we're at it, fuck it. Don't equate QAnoners to bakers either. Just don't insult bakers. I I love bread and pizza for that matter. We don't have to turn these into evil things. Anyway, we know where the Anon part comes from. Now let's talk about the Q. 
As one source states, whether he knows it or not, Trump birthed the QAnon conspiracy theory with a single sentence uttered to reporters while he posed with senior military leaders for a photo op in October last year. And last year, meaning 2017, the article I'm reading was written in 2018, just so you know. Anyway, back to the article. You guys know what this represents? Trump said, gesturing to the uniforms, maybe it's the calm before the storm. When reporters asked what storm, Trump refused to explain. This led to a brief burst of public speculation that he was hinting at a military strike. But no strike came and soon most of the world forgot about the strange comment. But the thinking progressed very differently on hard right internet forums such as 4chan's poll, where thousands of anonymous commenters literally deify Trump as a messianic revolutionary who conceals his strategic genius under layers of crass egotism and ineptitude. On those forums, Trump's comment was filled with meaning and his storm must be imminent. This is when a user named Q came along to enlighten everyone with what this storm really was. On October 28, someone calling themselves Q began posting a series of cryptic messages in poll thread titled Calm Before the Storm, assumedly in reference to that creepy Trump quote from early October. Q claimed to be a high level government insider with Q clearance, hence the name, tasked with posting Intel drops, which he, for some reason, called crumbs, straight to 4chan in order to covertly inform the public about POTUS's master plan to stage a counter coup against members of the deep state. It was, in short, absolutely insane. However, thanks to some rather forced coincidences like Q kind of sort of guessing that Trump would tweet the word small on Small Business Saturday and this one time the internet decided that Q was totally on Air Force One because he posted a blurry photo of some islands while Trump was on his trip to Asia and a whole heck of a lot of wishful thinking, people believed he was the real deal. So he kept talking. Q continued with a bunch of conspiracy theories. You can see them online as well as photos and their evidence. And I use that word incredibly loosely here. Honestly, I don't wanna give this ridiculousness too much attention because so, so much of what Q put out there was simply hypothetical or what they guessed happened. There's no real evidence. Yet the QAnon hashtag began to grow. Conspiracies that Clinton and John McCain, Obama and other democratic politicians were arrested and wearing secret police issued ankle monitors were everywhere. And someone apparently even wrote a 117 page book charting this person's rise to power. Again, none of this is proven. Reuters came out with an article that said research showed Russian accounts spreading the QAnon conspiracies and amplifying this movement as soon as it started. I truly wish I could explain to you why this caught on, but I'm not sure. I don't know why people believe in flat earth, the adrenochrome conspiracy or other dangerous government centered conspiracies such as this one. I suppose the topic could be a video in of itself, Maybe it's because these people wanted to feel like they were in on a secret. Maybe they just wanted someone to blame for why things don't go their way. Or as some psychologists theorize, people believe in this when science doesn't provide them with an answer they can understand. And we'll touch on that again in a little bit. Regardless of your opinion as to why it grew, there's no denying it happened and to extremely worrying levels. Eventually, QAnon left 4chan because it was infiltrated. Don't ask me how they knew this. I'm just here to report on what happened. Sometimes you just don't try to understand the logic in these things. You just gotta keep it moving. Anyway, 4chan suddenly became a no-go. So the QAnoners moved to 8chan, which is, you know, a little worse. Not only was it notorious for having no rules, but it was linked to child porn and violent acts such as the Christchurch shooting. One article stated, when the notorious online forum 8chan was forced off the internet in August after being linked to acts of violence, it looked like a blow to the QAnon conspiracy movement, which had made 8chan its virtual home. Rather than fade away though, 8chan's QAnon posters migrated to other platforms where they're still trying to use social media to influence elections. The two most popular new homes for QAnon followers are Nchan and 8chan's successor, 8kun. In late 2019, QAnon followers on NChan used Twitter to influence governor's races in Kentucky and Louisiana, posting tweets and memes in favor of Republican candidates and attacking their opponents. 
They analyze social media conversations, including popular hashtags to decide where and how to weigh in. Both Republicans lost in close elections. Now QAnon adherents are employing the same tactics on the 2020 presidential race. There are some small conspiracies out there that I think are generally harmless in small doses. The idea that we're all living in the matrix and its movie release was a glitch or the joke that Peter Mayhew is actually a Wookiee who just shaves for appearances and he gets regularly mistaken for Bigfoot. Those are kind of funny and seem a little lighthearted, so I don't think they do any real harm. However, QAnon isn't one of those conspiracies that started out harmless and just got out of control. QAnon began on a dangerous foundation. There's a child trafficking ring in DC and an innocent person just fucking working at a pizza shop had a gun pointed at them. For this to grow into something more violent is kind of to be expected, unfortunately, especially when they moved to sites like 8chan and tensions were already high as is. QAnon became, as LA Mag called it in August, 2020, the most potent force in American politics that most Americans have never heard of. Well. Not until recently, but we'll get there. Their ideas became a reality, even based on pure speculation. Do you guys remember a little while ago, many of you asked me to cover the whole Wayfair was taking part in child trafficking thing, and I didn't respond to you guys, and I obviously did not make a video about it. Well, surprise, surprise, that was because of an influencer with QAnon by the name of Amazing Polly, and they started the whole thing. And that's literally it. Ikea and other furniture retailers also named their products after women's names too, but Polly literally just speculated that Wayfair may be the one using these cabinets to traffic children and the idea blew up. Seven days after her posts, Wayfair found itself at the center of a global conspiracy theory that claimed the company was running a massive child sex trafficking ring. With the aid of thousands of self-styled investigators, speculation spread so hysterically on social media that scores of national news reporters investigated and a national human trafficking hotline operated by Polaris since 2007 was flooded with hundreds of calls, diverting resources from callers in need. Wafer issued a statement denying it was a front for a human trafficking ring, but believers dug in their heels, turning on Wafer's founder and his wife, embroidening new and ever more fantastic charges. Meanwhile, social media influencers posted memes that matched the names of Wayfair products with those of girls listed in old missing persons reports. Three days after the initial Reddit post, the Wayfair conspiracy theory had been mentioned on Twitter over 1.2 million times from 564,000 user accounts. One of the girls who was allegedly trafficked inside a Wayfair cabinet, Samia Moomin, posted a video on Facebook in which she slammed conspiracy theorists for taking attention away from a real problem. Y'all know how many people is actually missing. So many people seriously believe this. And I mean, holy shit, I remember when you guys were flooding my DMs uh, anywhere in my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, like wherever you could try and get a hold of me, you guys were telling me, Blair, you've gotta cover this, you've gotta cover this. and. I held out because something didn't seem quite right to me. And well, now here we are in this video and uh, I got the answer I was looking for. Things were not quite right and it wasn't because of Wayfair. But so many people believe this, like seriously, just because something is in a headline doesn't necessarily make it real, especially you know if everyone's just immediately going to making memes about it. And the reality was, is there was no actual sourcing to prove this existed. It was a rumor that simply spiraled out of control and people ran with it. But again, people continued to buy into this we are QAnon mentality. Alex Jones, of course, was among those that spread news of how he supported QAnon, though he actually did denounce them very recently as of writing this. Q tells us stuff in all of its lies, is what I'm saying. You keep you keep interrupting me. Because you're lying! Because you're full of shit! But people still believed in this QAnon thing and they would look for sites that were Q drops or the names of sites known for posting thousands of drops, which were converting people to the belief that Trump is leading a global fight against a satanic cabal of child trafficking elites. And this conspiracy explains a lot. I can only speculate here, but I'd assume that to the QAnon group, they think that they're choosing the lesser of two evils. Hell, if someone absolutely didn't like Trump, if they believed he was actually working to take down a child sex trafficking ring controlled by his opponents, then that might be just enough to turn the tide in his favor and give him support. 
QAnon followers even began spreading the hashtag save the children to promote their theories on Twitter. Again, despite there being no evidence for any of their claims. Again, this falls in line with the whole adrenochrome conspiracy that Hollywood elites are abducting and drinking the blood of children, which yeah, that's, that's a thing too. QAnon might think they're helping, but in actuality, all they're doing is hurting the real victims of trafficking and their save the children hashtag isn't saving anyone. According to an insider article that came out around the time of the presidential debate in October, 2020, with QAnon repackaged into simple, hard to challenge, save the children rhetoric, thousands of people have been incited to stand up for a cause that's linked to a false conspiracy theory movement that is affiliated with several candidates in the upcoming November election. Even President Donald Trump has taken advantage of this language to endear himself to the community. During Thursday night's NBC town hall, Trump not only refused to dismiss QAnon, but claimed that the movement is strongly against pedophilia. When moderator Savannah Guthrie asked Trump if he believed there was a satanic pedophile cult, Trump said, I don't know that, and neither do you know that. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube have all made efforts in the last six months to combat the rapid growth of QAnon on their platforms. Twitter said it removed 7,000 accounts connected to the theory in July, and Facebook quickly followed suit, removing 790 QAnon groups. Everyone agrees that child trafficking is very bad, and the argument QAnon makes is, if you're against us talking about this, you're in favor of child trafficking. Mark Andre Argentino, a doctoral student at Concordia University who researches extremism and its online propaganda with a focus on QAnon, told the New York Times. The push to save the children has inspired a huge increase in the number of women spreading QAnon rhetoric, according to Argentino's research. Argentino has dubbed this phenomenon pastel QAnon. As early as April, several popular lifestyle influencers on Instagram were spreading the conspiracy theories messaging by repackaging it as a call to end human trafficking. The danger, as many have stated, is that behind all soft colors and hashtags is what QAnon truly stands for, racism, misinformation, and violence. So now, aside from how the movement has grown, let's get into their beliefs, as if we haven't gone over enough of them already. I know, but let's go into their beliefs specifically. Okay, so I'm going to warn everyone now that we can't get to every single belief today, in part because I'm sure that by the time I release this episode, there will be a dozen more. So let's start with their failed predictions. In drop 647, Q seemed to predict a major event involving the Department of Defense for February 1st, 2017, calling it the Day of Days. Nothing of note happened either to that agency or the federal government in general that day. When Q stated in drop 700 or post or prediction number 700, the weekend of February 10th was going to be a suicide weekend for individuals targeted by the president. No high profile suicides happened that weekend. Using Barack Obama's middle name, Q predicted in drop 1043 that pics will surface of Hussein holding AK-47 in tribal attire and insinuated in two April drops that photos of Obama with a young girl named Wendy would appear and open him up to charges of pedophilia. No such pictures have ever appeared. They also said Trump's military parade would never be forgotten, though the parade was canceled. So I find that one particularly hilarious. A smoking gun video of Hillary Clinton was supposed to appear in March, 2018, but that didn't happen. And Zuckerberg didn't leave Facebook and flee the US. Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, also hasn't been forced to resign, nor has Pope Francis been arrested. All these predictions, as you can probably tell, center around people that are typically, well, not exactly liked by conservatives being arrested or shamed. Yet there don't seem to be any big predictions around Trump or Republican political figures, and you know, unless they're positive. But of course, that's not all, not even close. They also claim that the CIA installed North Korean leader Kim Jong-un as a puppet ruler with no proof again, because why proof when you have a creative mind, right? If someone says something, you can make it true if you think hard enough. For the record, that is sarcasm. They've also claimed that German Chancellor Angela Merkel is a descendant of Adolf Hitler and that Robert Mueller, who has been known for investigating voter fraud and Russia's interference in the 2016 election, was really working with Trump to expose Democrats and their massive criminal network. The whole Russia probe is just a well-planned distraction and Putin is in on it too, according to them. 
Spreading disinformation is bad enough, but they've even hacked into YouTube to alter search results. They targeted Hollywood stars like Tom Hanks, for example, so that if you searched his name, the top results were those accusing him of keeping sex slaves and targeting children. How do we know QAnon was responsible? The videos included the hashtags, hashtag QAnon, hashtag Pizzagate, and hashtag Pedogate. NBC reporter Ben Collins was the first to report on these altered results. What's interesting is that Q has reportedly never mentioned Tom Hanks or Steven Spielberg by name in the breadcrumbs. YouTube did not comment about how the hack happened. The article I've referenced has also said that the ideas are vague and not necessarily alarming, but it's when they believed and action is taken is when we need to be concerned. The thing is, months ago, I would have agreed. Thoughts alone aren't harmful. However, it's the nature of this sort of echo chamber that QAnon has created for themselves where they're just spewing these ideas back and forth. It kind of makes sense that this all became violent. If you were constantly being told that people were sex trafficking children, politicians were responsible and no one was acting on it and you mistakenly believed the source it was coming from, then yeah, I think maybe you would be moved to act too. Words absolutely do have power. The QAnon recognized that their claims and predictions were too specific though. In order to gain more attention and more people on their side, their claims started to become a bit more vague and believable. Or they've latched onto many other popular conspiracies that have now become part of the QAnon subculture. For example, drinking MMS, Miracle Mineral Solution, so that they believe it could cure COVID. It's straight up bleach and we've talked about it on my YouTube channel before. Some flat earthers have also become QAnon members as QAnon has become increasingly equated with science denial. There was the adrenochrome and Pizzagate, as we mentioned earlier, and of course, the idea of voter fraud in the 2020 election. It's all stemming from the same place. According to the European Journal of Social Psychology, the potential impact and breadth of conspiracy theories was underscored in 2016 when Donald Trump was elected US president despite propagating a range of highly implausible conspiracy theories throughout his campaign. These theories included allegations that climate change is a hoax perpetuated by the Chinese, that Barack Obama was not born in the US, and that vaccines cause autism. The social scientists have increasingly recognized the importance of understanding conspiracy beliefs and empirical research on this phenomenon has proliferated in the past decade. I did try to understand why this is, and I think EJSP does a fantastic job of explaining it. If you do want to read the article, I will leave it in sources. But the main points are that first of all, conspiracy theories can have real consequences, whether or not they're known for directly causing violence. Like the conspiracy theory that vaccines cause autism, for example, it's very clearly a conspiracy theory without basis in reality. And we've talked about this singular disproven study that supports this claim before. And yet, if a parent doesn't vaccinate their child because of it, not only could their child suffer and die, but infect and harm others as well. As for why all this happens in the first place, the EJSP says that a collective feeling of in-group superiority demonstrates a greater risk of belief in conspiracy theories. Now, I could be interpreting this wrong, but I don't think I am, but maybe. Feel free to roast me if, if I'm wrong, but basically what I think it means is that if you were relatively unaware of the outside world around you or you saw others as lesser than, then you're far more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. This goes for anyone. This study isn't about Republicans versus Democrats, blue versus red, male versus female. The fact of the matter is that if you surround yourself with thoughts and opinions like yours and only yours, just as the QAnons have done online, then you become more susceptible to having these conspiracy theories and thoughts about people you view as lesser. As for what happened, well, Though we still have no idea who Q is, the chances are the identity of Q is controlled by multiple people. QAnon has become a terrifying movement. They are the conspiracy that won't die with an addictive alternative reality to their users. As of March, 2020, 76% of Americans said they had never heard of QAnon, 20% said they knew little bit about it, and 3% said they knew a lot about it. The ADL or the Anti-Defamation League has stated that although most QAnon inspired conspiracies have nothing to do with anti-Semitism, a review of QAnon tweets and several aspects of their lore have proved pretty in line with anti-Semitic tropes. 
QAnon has done a lot actually, though some of their actions aren't quite as well known. In 2018, one man faced terrorism charges for using an armored vehicle to block traffic on a bridge near the Hoover Dam. He wrote letters from jail addressed to Trump and other elected officials bearing the motto of QAnon on them. The man was eventually sentenced to seven years on a terrorism charge and nine months consecutively for unlawful flight. In July of that same year, Q posted a link to Stormy Daniels' attorney's website and photos of his office along with the message, buckle up, as well as a photo of a man near his office with the caption that a message had been sent. Police investigated the incident, though nothing really came of it. When Anthony Comello was charged with murder in 2019, he flashed a series of messages scrawled on his hands, including a pro QAnon message and MAGA forever. The groups have been involved with aggravated assault and one Colorado woman even said she was inspired to kidnap her child who has been removed by her custody in a raid with help of QAnon conspiracy theorists. NBC News reported, according to an arrest affidavit, Abkug's daughter, who was still in her custody, told police and child service caseworkers in September that her mother had gotten into some conspiracy theories and she was spiraling down it since her sibling was removed from the home. She also said her mother had stopped attending therapy two months earlier. Abkug's daughter said her mother had become abusive and was planning a raid to get her other child back, the affidavit said. The girl also said that her mother had procured a gun and that an armed man, who she said was definitely a part of this group QAnon and was sleeping on their couch for self-defense, planned to carry out the kidnapping raid with her mother, according to the affidavit. The girl said she did not know when her mother planned to carry out the kidnapping, but she said she was concerned that people were going to be injured because her mother said that they took her sibling wrongfully and those people are evil Satan worshipers and pedophiles, according to the affidavit. She could not understand why her mother did not see how this was a bad thing, the arrest affidavit said. So needless to say, this group doesn't get any good press. They're not helping anyone. And I feel like we've established that. But what is it that made them more well-known? What is it that finally brought attention to this radical group and has more people aware of them more than ever? Well, the Capitol siege. I'm pretty sure all of you knew that and this whole video has simply been leading up to this day. Look, I don't care if you're red, blue, whatever, the Capitol siege should be condemned by all sides. Even if I thought this was ridiculous and didn't wanna talk about it much before, that changed the moment after the Capitol siege. I don't care if I offend anyone by saying what I'm about to say because anyone that gets offended by this is someone I don't want as a viewer anyway. So let's get into what happened. QAnon was shaken by Trump's loss. Since Trump's defeat, Q went dark. There were no posts from the account on 8kun and this disappearance was jarring for the believers that relied on the account's drops for reassurance. They feel really defeated by the deep state, even if they're not admitting it in public, said Frederick Brennan, the founder of 8chan, 8kun's predecessor site. Mr. Brennan, who has left the site and become a vocal critic of Mr. Watkins, the owner of 8kun and a professed QAnon believer, said QAnon believers had brought into the idea that Mr. Trump was fully in control, even as the polls showed he had a slim chance of winning. They were not expecting him to lose and they were not expecting Fox News to call it, he said. It was really psychologically damaging. The believers had no reassurance, faced a serious loss and no plan emerged. The New York Times speculated on November 10th, 2020, that they would latch onto other conspiracies about voter fraud, which many did. However, as the voter fraud was proven to be bogus and Biden's inauguration loomed, QAnon members reacted by, well, a siege on the Capitol. Now, don't mistake me saying this. I'm not saying that every single person there was a member of QAnon and this was entirely their doing. This is just to say that many of them were advocates of the conspiracy, including the guy that had the horned furry hat. Yeah, remember that guy? He promotes QAnon. I don't even wanna say his name because I feel like these people thrive off negative attention. So no names from me. The man that led the charge into the Senate chamber was a QAnon promoter too. There were reports of protesters wearing six MWE shirts as well, which means six million wasn't enough in reference to the six million Jewish people murdered during the Holocaust. One source states, the siege on the US Capitol played out as a QAnon fantasy made real. The faithful rose up in their thousands summoned to Washington by their leader, President Trump. 
They seized the people's house as politicians cowered under their desks. Hordes wearing t-shirts emblazoned with the Q symbol and toting Trump flags closed in to deliver justice, armed with zip tie handcuffs and rope and guns. The hashtag storm envisioned on far right message boards had arrived and two women who had died in the rampage, both QAnon devotees had become what some were calling the first martyrs of the cause. The siege ended with police retaking the Capitol and Trump being rebuked and losing his Twitter account. But the failed insurrection illustrated how the paranoid conspiracy theory QAnon had radicalized Americans, reshaped the Republican party and gained a forceful grip on right-wing belief. Born in the internet's fever swamps, QAnon played an unmistakable role in energizing rioters during the real world attack on January 6th. A man in a Q t-shirt led the breach of the Senate while a shirtless fur clad believer known as the Q shaman posed for photographers in the Senate chamber. Twitter later purged more than 70,000 accounts associated with the conspiracy theory in an acknowledgement of the online potency of QAnon. QAnon didn't fully account for the rampage and the theory's namesake. A top secret government messenger of pro-Trump prophecies, Q himself, has largely vanished, posting nothing in the past 35 days and only five times since Trump's election loss. But QAnon's prominence at the Capitol raid shows how powerful the conspiracy theory has become and how quickly it has established a life of its own. On fringe right-wing platforms and encrypted messaging apps, believers are offering increasingly outlandish theories and sharing ideas for how they can further work to overturn the results of the November 3rd contest, with violence if necessary. The fervent online organizing seen ahead of last week's assault has begun building again. A QAnon group on Gab has grown more than 40,000 members since the failed insurrection. Thousands more have flocked to QAnon affiliated spaces on the private messaging app, Telegram. One 12,000 member channel was so overrun with new members that those behind the forum temporarily froze the chat feature. Even as Trump is set to exit the White House, QAnon's grip on the conservative psyche is growing. Two freshman Republican members of Congress, Reps Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert have voiced support for QAnon while others have tweeted its slogans. State legislators across the country have further lent its credence while also backing Trump's claims of electoral theft despite a lack of evidence and dozens of swift rejections in court. I know you guys have heard this before, or at least I'm assuming you have because I know you've heard it a ton in these past few weeks. This is a threat to democracy. It truly is. It's not just some conspiracy theory to laugh at, and I never would have expected some absolutely easily disproved lies to get this far. And this thing hasn't died at all. QAnon wants us to know that they're still here. Biden's election has only stirred up more feelings of resentment among these people. And with Trump saying, I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate. It doesn't seem like they're likely to go away anytime soon. Trump has said, I've heard these are people that love our country. And even when he was told by a reporter that the crux of their belief is that he's saving the world from a satanic cult, Trump responded with, is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know. So needless to say, without them being denounced by the man they idolize, QAnon is going to grow more violent. Hell, even if Trump did denounce them, I'm not sure it would do much good. They'd probably say he was forced to say it or something. You can see those violent rioters at the Capitol, many wearing Q shirts, taking action, and it only makes me more worried for what's to come. This was born out of just a tweet after all. And as I'm recording this, it's before the inauguration day, and this episode is obviously coming out after the inauguration day, and I don't know what's gonna happen. I know there's a plan for things supposedly to happen in all 50 states, and I hope to God it doesn't happen but I'm no mind reader. I don't know what's gonna happen. I hope to God that I'm right when I say nothing's gonna happen, but I'm very fearful that something terrible is going to happen instead. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I'm sorry if today was a little bit all over the place, but we finally made it through. Thank you so much for watching the channel. Love you guys. That's it, I guess.